ओम श्री गुरु भ्यो नम वेदांत गुरु जी चैनल में आप सभी का स्वागत है आज है गुरु पूर्णिमा या व्यास पूर्णिमा भी इसको कहते हैं तो गुरु पूर्णिमा के इस अवसर पर आप सभी को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं हैं और आज के दिन यानी गुरु पूर्णिमा के दिन हम सभी गुरुओं को नमन करते हैं और ख़ास तौर पर सभी वेदांत गुरु जी को यानी सभी ऋषियों को मुनियों को उन्हें हम प्रणाम करते हैं उनका हम सादर नमन करते हैं सो वी शो अवर ग्रैटिट्यूड टूवर्ड्स ऑल द गुरुज ऋषिज मुनीस फॉर देयर मोस्ट वैल्यूएबल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दिस नॉलेज ऑफ आत्मा विद्या सो so, आज गुरु पूर्णिमा के उपलक्ष पे हमारा एक विशेष टॉपिक है द यूनिवर्सल लॉज ऑफ लाइफ यूनिवर्सल लॉज यानी जो नित्य है सनातन है जो सबके लिए हर समय हर स्थान पर वो लागू होते हैं जो हमारे जीवन को कंट्रोल करते हैं और जिसे ना तो हम बदल सकते हैं ना हम उसे बाईपास करके जा सकते हैं सो so, इसलिए इट इज ऑल मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस टू नो दिस लॉस सो ये लॉस क्या है इसको जानना हमारे लिए बहुत ही जरूरी हो जाता है तो आज हम इस लॉस को जानेंगे तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं आज का ये सेशन शुरू करने से पहले आप सभी के लिए एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण खुशखबरी है अगर आप भी वेदांत के गहराई में उतरना चाहते हैं उसे सिस्टमेटिकली समझना चाहते हैं तो हम ला रहे हैं आपके लिए पूरा वेदांता का कोर्स जिसमें हम सीखेंगे वेदांता सिस्टमेटिकली डीपली शास्त्रों के एक एक श्लोक को उसके शब्दार्थ को उसके भावार्थ को हम यहाँ पे समझते हैं ये सेशंस आप घर बैठे आराम से ऑनलाइन केवल और केवल आप जूम पे अटेंड कर सकते हैं हमारे साथ और इस कोर्स की शुरुआत हम कर रहे हैं दो टेक्स्ट के साथ में जहाँ पे पहला टेक्स्ट है तत्व बोध ट्रेडिशनली वेदांत के कोर्स की शुरुआत तत्व बोध से करते हैं क्योंकि तत्व बोध में वेदांत से रिलेटेड सारे फंडामेंटल्स बता दिए गए हैं और दूसरा टेक्स्ट है आत्मबोध सो आत्मबोध पॉइंट्स आउट द नॉलेज ऑफ द सेल्फ एंड इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस नॉलेज विदाउट विच मोक्षा इज नॉट पॉसिबल एट ऑल और अधिक जानकारी के लिए आप हमारे गूगल फॉर्म को यहाँ क्यू कोड दिया और नीचे गूगल फॉर्म की लिंक दी है उस गूगल फॉर्म को ओपन करके उसके और जानकारी हासिल कर सकते हैं तथा उसे भर के आप इस कोर्स के लिए रजिस्टर कर सकते हैं और चूंकि ये ट्रेडिशनल वेदांता है एंड वी ट्राई टू मेंटेन द ट्रेडिशन एज फार एज पॉसिबल सो यहाँ फीस नहीं हो करके मंथली गुरु दक्षिणा है एज पर योर श्रद्धा सो एनी बडी अबाउ एटीन कैन ज्वाइन दिस कोर्स सो लेट एस स्टार्ट टूडे स्पेशल सेशन लॉज ऑफ लाइफ विथ प्रेयर सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा ओम सहनावत सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर्यकर वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमा विदिषा वह ई शांति 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 ही ओम तत्सत सो so, इस सेशन में हमने सेवन इंपॉर्टेंट लॉज के बारे में डिस्कस किया है और जिसकी टाइम स्टैम्प नीचे दी गई है तो आप बाद में कभी भी रिपीट सुनना चाहते हैं तो टाइम स्टैम्प का यूज करते हुए पर्टिकुलर लॉ को सुन सकते हैं जान सकते हैं सो द फर्स्ट लॉ वॉट वी डिस्कस वॉट एवर कैपेसिटी इज गिवन टू यू You must use it or you will lose it. So we have compared a human being, animals versus the plants. So, so plants, animals, and human they all have the body. Plants have rudimentary mind, we can say. Animals have full-fledged mind, and human being also have full-fledged mind. Intellect is provided basically to human being and partially to animals. but the self effort is provided only to human being so human being have purushartha which is the human being alone have that so these are the facilities given to you if plants they are given with the life and with the minimal activities they must act to survive like their roots must go deep into the soil to draw water to extract mineral etc they must find out the way to get sunlight 
oxygen or carbon dioxide whatever they need so they should find out from the srishti from the prakriti to draw the things whatever is needed for their survival because life is given mineral they have no life so they need not bother about their survival also animals are provided with the life human beings are also provided with the life but animals as compared to plants they are provided with the movement from one place to other place therefore they must move from one place to other place they are given proper tools to catch their prey or to find their food and to create shelter for themselves therefore they must find the food and shelter for themselves whereas human beings are provided with self effort so they must utilize their self effort so beyond finding the food and shelter they have to cook the food they have to purify they need a better clothing also shelter also but beyond that is they are the only being who are given this capacity of choice therefore they must make a choice for their spiritual growth no other creature has this choice except for human being and since the choice is given therefore you have a bigger responsibility in this life being a human being you have a bigger responsibility in this life on this planet earth because if choice is given you can be a most destructive to this world or you can be the most beneficial to this world that is in your hand therefore you must use your purushartha if you don't use your purushartha or any a human being minus purushartha minus buddhi equals animals your human being minus emotions also equals plants a human being minus activity also who is like a very who is a parasite who depends upon other people only he is like a mineral only then so a human being using the purushartha for the welfare of the society he is a god man then so a person you as a human being can be a god man or can be a stone man or mineral man that is possible that is because you have provided with the choice then we had a very important law we discussed because you are provided with the purushartha therefore you must follow dharma no other creature has the purushartha so they need not follow dharma so our second principle what we were discussing was dharma if you rub with dharma you will be rubbed in the process it's like eraser the rubber the eraser if you rub with the eraser eraser is also rubbed with that so because the purushartha is provided to you therefore dharma is meant only for human being no other creature need to follow dharma because they are by default they naturally are in tune with dharma they don't go against the nature a tiger if he is not hungry he will not kill any prey a human being will not hesitate to kill or to find extra thing even if they don't need it they will go and buy it so because we have purushartha so dharma is not religion like commonly it is understood dharma meaning the religion but no dharma is not religion dharma is the universal principle it is the one of the four purushartha so what are these four purusharthas dharma artha kama and moksha so these are the four purushartha whereas artha and kama is like you want to earn wealth no problem you want to enjoy wealth you want to enjoy the life no problem but whether earning or enjoyment both must follow dharma that is the primary and the foremost thing and no moksha is possible without following dharma so dharma is the prerequisite for everything it is the ultimate thing even if you don't have the goal of spirituality dharma is must for artha and kama dharma is must or if you have the goal of spirituality that is moksha even then dharma is must 
so you cannot bypass dharma it is the most important quality important principle what you should follow and if you don't follow you will perish in this life here so dharma is universal but still it can be divided in two categories one is the samanya dharma and other is the vishesha dharma so samanya dharma is universal it is applicable to all one and all it is same Vishesha Dharma is specific with reference to Desha, Kala, Paristhiti, it is specific. It is like Ashrama Dharma is specific. If you belong to a particular Ashrama, then you have to follow that Dharma with reference to that Ashrama. Or Varna Dharma, if you belong to Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, one of this category, then you must fulfill that dharma. And ashrama dharma is what? Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanaprastha or Sanyasa ashrama. So if you belong to any of this, you must fulfill the dharma, Vishesha dharma pertaining to that particular ashrama or Varna dharma. And one of the foremost dharma, dharma is like, as we said, universal and it is the mother of all the laws including law of karma etc all the laws are nothing but uh, just a spoke of this umbrella where this is the main rod and the hub for our main center point for all the spokes where all the spokes are connected to this hub here so therefore dharma is very important and it is mother of all the laws all the universal laws here and one of them is Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. So Ahimsa is the foremost because you have no right to hurt anybody in this world here. But practicing Dharma is not easy. Even if you wish to do so, there are some obstacles what you have to overcome or there are obstacles to stop you for practicing this Dharma. First of all, we don't use Purushartha out of Tamas. We, whatever comes naturally, we just follow that. We follow the mind. We don't use, apply our Buddhi intellect. Therefore, that is one of the thing which is in our hand only. Then second thing is, I expect other people to follow Dharma, but I don't want to follow Dharma. So everybody is extroverted. So they want other people to follow Dharma. Then there is a peer pressure to do a Dharma. If everybody is taking bribe, if I am also taking what's wrong in that. And if I am getting this opportunity, it is easy. If you want to give, I want to take, I need money. What's wrong in that? So it's convenient. For the sake of convenience, we take it. Or pressure of Ragadvesha. If we have a Ragadvesha or desires, because of that pressure, we follow a dharma then we don't do a dharma then what is initially in the beginning on surface level what is easy to follow what is convenient to follow what is just available for me easily that i follow i pick up that i don't see the consequences behind this action i just see the surface level benefit like sense pleasure it gives you immediate instant pleasure. We don't see what are the damage it causes. But sense pleasures are there. We go and find out and get it. Because it gives you instant pleasure. So we fall for instant benefit. We don't have the vision of the long term. Or we don't want to see the long term results there. Or if person is, is addicted to something. Then he will follow a dharma like drug addict or alcoholic or anybody. Any addicted person will follow a dharma then now the question arises how should i live a life of dharma so first and foremost thing is you are provided with the purushartha use your free will ask yourself is it dharmic or adharmic if it is dharmic do it adharmic avoid it if your mind says no i cannot avoid it but still you have to be aware that okay i am ready to accept the consequences of a dharma then I am unable to follow dharma like Duryodhana said, I know what is dharma and what is adharma, but I am unable to follow dharma. So 
that is the problem with Duryodhana and we all have Duryodhana in our in us little bit of Duryodhana is there in everybody so if you are unable to find or if we are unable to follow Dharma try not to do a Dharma if you can't do that also but then you have to be aware of it Ki, okay I'm doing a Dharma and whatever consequences are there I'm ready to face it then Perform your action with the Ishwara Arpana Bhava and Prasad Bhuti and that is the Karma Yoga Bhavana here. But there will always be a Dharma Sankata when you follow Dharma. What is higher, what is lower? If there are conflict like Arjuna had the conflict, how can I kill my own kinsmen, my own family members, my own friends, how can I kill them? They are the most respected people in my life. So there is a Dharma Sankata. Then what is higher, what is lower? Then what is subtler and what is grosser? What is quantity wise and the quality wise? So you have to choose the higher and drop the lower. Because whenever there is a conflict of Dharma, it is bound to be there. It is bound to be there every day, every minute for every action, every decision you take. It is bound to be there. Because in Vyavara Jagat, nothing is crystal clear. Nothing is black and white. Everything is very hazy. Sometime what is a dharma looks like dharma and what is dharma looks like a dharma. So that is the biggest problem. So whatever is higher and whatever is lower, whatever is subtler and then grosser, whatever is quality wise higher than quantity wise. So this is better than higher subtler quality is better than the other one. Then we discuss the third principle what we discussed was as your experiences so is your life. The quality of experiences determines the quality of your life. Quantity of experiences determines the quantity of your life. And what you are today, whatever you are, so are your experiences. Jaise aap ho, waise aapka anubhav bhi hai. So whether the quality or quantity of life depending upon the quality and quantity of your experiences. And we discuss life. What is life? Life is nothing but series of experiences. What is experience? Subject plus object equals experiences. Where? What is subject? Is me the individual. I am the subject. The individual, this Jivatma is the subject. And anything else other than me, including my wife, my husband, my children, my parents, other being, are object for me. Anything other than me is the object. At subtler level, if you go, at the deeper level, if you go, then even this body-mind sense complex is my body-mind sense complex. I objectify this body-mind sense complex. Even that becomes the object. That is explained in the Druk Drishya Viveka there. Okay, but for all purposes we say, I am the subject, the world is an object. So I, the subject, contacts the object, the world, and I am getting an experience. So depending upon the quality of subject, the quality of object, and the quality of combination, subject plus object, the correlation, decides my experience, the quality of my experience. Sometimes subject and object may be of good quality, but not necessarily the experience is the combination is the good. That is not possible. So always it doesn't happen. Though primarily we can say if both are good, the combination has to be good, but it is not necessary that we have already discussed. We try to improve the experience to for the betterment of the life we want to improve the experience and to improve the experience we tried our level best to improve the object the environment and no doubt about it the environment the object has improved to great extent but on the contrary instead of our life becoming a better life a joyful life it has become stressful life the object which has improved, which is one of the ingredient in my experience, if that has improved, it should give me happiness, but that is not happening. Because 
on the other hand the subject is deteriorated the subject is not only not improved but it has gone down with reference to the values with reference to the morality etc it has gone down therefore even though you get the best of the world but you cannot find happiness from the world if the subject the me is not improved therefore it is all important to develop myself improve myself and secondarily to improve the outside world so you may have the best of the things but it is of no use if i am not the best or i may not have the best of the thing but if i am the best i can make good use of it or the best use of the world that depends upon the subject so subject is the main cause for my experiences the quality of experiences secondary cause is the object the world therefore i must try to develop the subject i must try to develop myself that is foremost important but unfortunately subject is neglected to the point of fault and it is a vedanta only through vedanta or shastra are there to educate you which deals with the subject all other subject matter what you are discussing in life what you are studying in the school and colleges are meant only to develop the object all the subject matter including mba including doctor science medical science anything for that matter is only to develop the object including the psychiatrist they are try to develop the object basically but then i have to develop the subject ultimately i need to know who am i that is the ultimate goal then we have the we discuss the fourth one you are what your shraddha is and as you think so you become as your thought so the world so you are whatever you are good bad whatever you are right now physically mentally materially whatever you are it is all because of your shraddha in whatever field you have shraddha that you are so if you think negative or positive you become negative or positive and this programming of our thought was done in the childhood itself and then we have nurtured it is not that childhood it was done that basic programming was done in the childhood by our parents our environment but after that it is up to us to identify with that or to improvise in that that is that self effort i have so i cannot blame only my parents or only my environment that okay i born in that so i can't do anything no we can't say always we have the free will to overcome our whatever is the situation from that point so no doubt programming was done in the childhood may majorly but still i have the self effort purushartha so when we say as you think so you become it is not surface level thoughts it is the deep rooted thought the consistent thought which is persistent from longer time and deeply you are pursuing something internally mentally and that because of the thought persistent thought you act accordingly and when there is a thought and there is a action there is a result and no result is possible without the action unless and until you have the thought that kind of thought you will not get this kind of environment unless and until you had the spiritual mind spiritual thought it's not surface level thought it was deep rooted thought that's why you continued till now you continued continuously from the beginning till the end that is your shraddha so whatever is your shraddha whether it is materialistic or spiritual shraddha you become materialistic or spiritual person but it is not just uh, nama japa i am brahman i am brahman i am brahman no it is the constant awareness that aham brahmasmi it is the awareness constantly 24 7 365 days that makes it your shraddha so shraddha generally it is defined as guru vakyeshu vedanta vakyeshu shastra vakyeshu vishwasah iti shraddha meaning having faith in the teacher 
and the shastra is shraddha but here in this context it is your consistent committed effort in a particular direction is called shraddha whether you are experiencing right now the kaliyuga or satyuga it is because of your shraddha only nothing else because of your mindset you are experiencing kaliyuga or satyuga brahma loka or mrityu loka that is your experience now you have to decide what are you experiencing then this was the this is very like all this laws are very important laws then there was another important law is attach you lose detach you gain again shastra is not against true love and attachment is not true love attachment is the false love we think attachment is true it is necessary it is important in our vyavara jagat no attachment is the deadliest thing in fact attachment pollutes your relationship it is the love because of which your relationship blossoms but attachment is actually putrify or kills your relationship if you want to maintain a healthy relationship you have to drop the attachment there's no doubt about it so attachment is not love and we have already discussed the difference between attachment and love what is love is feeling of oneness that oneness with all living being it is not just my family member or my known people no it is with all living being when i feel the oneness and in that love and attachment are the same emotion but when the love is mixed with the selfishness is he going to cater to me am i going to get any benefit from that person then i love him or her that is attachment i i love him or her or any object for that matter any position any situation any status for that matter i get attached to that when there is a selfishness in the love it becomes attachment so what we should do is drop the selfishness expand the circle of identification so earlier we were working only for myself then we work for the family we think about the country the humanity and the whole universe so gradually you expand the circle of identification the more larger the identification you have lesser the ego lesser the attachment you will have as swami ramatirtha says there are three possibilities for attachment either person will move away from you or if attachment is deeper there will be rupture there will be dispute between the two or one or both may die it is unfallible law if you are attached to any worldly thing any worldly thing that attachment is bound to break when it is at its peak it will be taken away from you then why attachment causes loss what is the mechanism behind that because demand and supply is changing everything is changing my likes and dislikes are changing supply is changing everyone's nature is different and everyone's wants are different and everybody want freedom attachment binds so nobody wants the binding that restriction they everybody wants freedom and love gives freedom therefore attachment causes the separation it's like seed on the wall concrete wall we have seen that concrete doesn't expand doesn't give room for the seed to grow seed is growing so when seed is growing it will break the concrete because concrete is not growing it is stagnant it is stubborn it will break what and where is the soil which expand give rooms to the so, uh, tree to grow therefore their relationship is lifelong and healthy also that is the healthy relationship and everybody's goal is changing environment is changing in a school we had a different thought flow 
in college we had different thought flow when we are working we are in different field so school we were all together but now those friends are at different places and we are with we are changing the friends also it changes life is changing then so attach you lose detach you gain then seek the higher lower will be taken care of the sixth law what we discussed earlier seek the higher and lower will be taken care of so here the fundamental thing is what is higher what is lower the quantity wise and quality wise the grossness and the subtleness the subtler is deeper and the higher quality wise it is higher long lasting so we must seek the higher and from selfish to unselfish and unselfish to selfless we must expand the circle of identification what we have just discussed here so this is the circle of identification from myself i identify with the family to society to country to humanity to totality then i identify with the totality the whole universe there so larger the circle of identification if you have that is the highest thing and if you identify with the highest you get the maximum strength to work and the least tiredness a person who is highly selfish working only for himself he will feel very tired very soon he will feel tired and there is lot of energy required to work and the least productivity will be there even if productivity will be there he won't be able to enjoy it because he doesn't identify with other people and the universe meaning feeling of oneness so quality wise we say move from gross to subtle and the grossest is the material level if you are working for the material or physical or emotional or intellectual and the highest the subtlest is the spiritual goal the atman the moksha the self so material is the grossest if you are working for money it is the grossest goal if you are working for your selfish and money it is the grossest it is the grossest you really have to struggle a lot when you you can't say i am working for myself only and but i am working for spirituality that will never happen if you are working for spirituality if you are if that is your goal you cannot be working for only for yourself that is not possible as i said dharma includes everyone so unless and until you have the identification with all beings or at least to majority people unless until you have that identification you cannot have the goal of spirituality it is not possible so wherever is your shraddha whether it is in the money material thing or if your shraddha is in the physical aspect or the emotional intellectual or spiritual so gross to subtle if you have at the grosser level shift it to subtler level and gradually as you shift to the subtler level you your grosser things will be taken care of if you are working for material thing your spiritual level intellectual emotional physical will not work a, a, that help will not come to you if a student is going to learn mba but his only focus is that i want to earn after that he cannot learn he can only earn but he cannot learn he will not be able to gain knowledge because he is not interested in learning he is interested in earning that and the moment if he finds that i can earn without learning also he will give up that education also so if you attune to higher lower things will be taken care of that is the law if you are attuned to something subtler grosser will be taken care of the highest thing is work for ishwara right now when you are working in your daily life whether you go for a job or your housewife or you retired person doesn't matter but you have to work somewhere right now we are working for myself or my family maximum nobody works even for the community or country also raise your thought 
to that level same work you don't have to change the type of work but you have to change the attitude behind the work i am working for myself my family now shift it this work is for humanity this work is for my spiritual growth shift your goal from selfish family to country to humanity to spirituality so shift your goal if you are earning i am not earning for myself or my family i am earning for the company i am earning for the country or i am earning for the humanity or i am earning for godhood i am working for godhood so keep that attitude that i am working for godhood nothing else it may sound impractical but this is the most practical thing if you just get attuned to it nothing can stop you then meaning you will never be stress in your life because you are not working for yourself you will never be stress but as long as there is a stress meaning selfishness is guaranteed there think and fake it and make it initially fake it and make it in the sense you fake it like okay i am working for god say it automatically it will become a part of your system then the seventh law is when you give you get what you give you get nature knows only one thing whatever you give to this nature negative or positive it only multiplies and gives you back and if you sow one seed it multiplies and gives you back in in many fruits many seeds and it goes to the infinity nature is infinite so you get infinity so result is guaranteed and universe will reciprocate whatever you give you will get it back that is 100% sure maybe now or later on the next janma doesn't matter but you are bound to get it for sure and the more the delay more the delay more the multiplication will happen if your investment is there for longer period you will get more interest for that so always remember that you don't think that if i do wrong thing and nobody has seen i can escape and i did not get any result no somewhere down the line you are bound to get it you don't know how and where and you will not be able to connect it also on the other hand a person who instead of giving who tries to grab he will lose it or he won't be able to use it that is the rajasic attitude i'll give one simple example here even when we go to the market and we try to bargain bargaining to one point in india is okay but when you understand that he gives at the he is giving at the right price in spite of that when we bargain we try to misuse or abuse our power or his weakness his helplessness it will not be fruitful for you then because you are not giving the full amount to that person that fruit whatever you buy it you won't be able to utilize it fully you can taste it you can try it out that yeah i am not saying the person who is uh, quoting very high price black market value and he is charging and you bargain you need not bargain you move away from that person then the question arises if i have earned something it is my wealth my knowledge my emotions why should i share with other person i will share as per my wish wherever i get the benefit i will share with them why should i share with other people where i am not going to get any benefit the law is first of all when you give you get but if you give with the intention of getting something you won't get anything because your shraddha is in not giving your shraddha is in getting something so that is not giving then the most important thing is you are constant takers from your childhood from the birth itself you are taking constantly from the whole universe you are taking the oxygen you are taking water you are taking uh, sunlight you have taken the birth itself 
and you can't even repay for one thing so whatever is your capacity you try to repay in whatever way you want you must repay don't hold on to yourself just give just give and reap you are actually not giving in the sense it is not that you become the big by giving no you are repaying your loans to the nature to the godhood and in fact bhagavad gita says in the third chapter if a person is only a consuming without contributing a person who is eating without producing is verily a thief and we have seen the cows and bulls are worshiped because they live with the principle of maximum giving minimum taking so anything any being which works with the intention of maximum giving and minimum taking they will be peaceful so you are what you give not what you take like color phenomena blue gives blue red gives red black gives nothing therefore it is black white gives everything therefore it is white so the like color phenomena where what you give you are and like ventilation example we have taken unless and until you allow uh, you open another window from where the air goes you cannot receive breeze from outside so first you allow it to go only then you will receive only then it will be receiving in the sense you may own it you may possess it but you can't enjoy it so you own it you possess it and you enjoy it only if you release it first so ventilation example is a wonderful example so majority people they are only looking forward for what is my right in this world what i should get it but rather than they should think what is my duty is to give my only duty is to give to share to contribute and because of this attitude of giving sharing this universe world is growing the growth is happening the peace and prosperity is happening only when you give when everybody gives if everybody becomes taker everything will collapse like hinduism is collapsing reducing because of our indulgence in our own luxurious life we don't want to take an action for shastra we don't want to study that is the problem so therefore one must have the attitude of giving and not taking life is to give not to take like victor hugo hugo said be a contributor and not a consumer that is what we should do now the question arises where and what to give as per your shraddha your capacity shraddha meaning what is your capacity and what is your heart how much heart you have you may have a big capacity but your heart is very small so you can't give so your capacity and your heart how much is there accordingly you must give desha kala paristhiti anusar you must give the whole universe is yagnya yagnya is nothing but contribution everyone contributes in this universe therefore universe is growing so whether it is at the material physical emotional intellectual or spiritual level and the highest form of charity is when you gain the brahma vidya atma vidya the knowledge of the self that is the highest form of charity so that is the primary and the foremost thing we must do otherwise at whatever level material physical emotional intellectual level if we can give it all all level fine you give share and believe me you will definitely you can you know you can experiment it in your life i have done once long ago when i was in the ashram studying in the ashram that time i was traveling from mumbai to pune so you know this uh, love apples white jamun so in the train one lady came and she was selling that when one one dona 10 rupees or something was the cost i don't remember now then uh, 10 12 pieces were there so i purchased one and i shared i tried to share it with everyone 
so initially one or two people they hesitated to take when other people took then again i asked them to take it then i gave him gave them so this is how like 12 pieces two two pieces we all got it then another person bought the same thing from that two donors he also distributed and this is how it happened and then six of us were sitting and chat started chatting there i was supposed to get down at lonavala at that time and uh, i was going to the ashram my previous ashram there then you know they asked me what are you doing and how those things are happening so i said i'm going to the ashram there and uh, that's all i live there they i think one or two people they asked that bai who was selling this they asked the whole tokri they purchased the whole tokri whatever uh, maybe i don't know 200 pieces must be there they purchased the whole thing and they gave it to me please this is for your ashram then so i just shared two two pieces but then the environment become so friendly there and they all contributed to everyone and for the ashram also this is just an experiment you can also do this kind of experiment in your life and find out how this law is functioning amazingly so just try it out that so anyway but this life is to give not to take victor hugo says that be a contributor not a consumer swami dayananda ji says that be a contributor not a consumer so live your life like that right we will conclude with the prayer then om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchid dukkha bhag bhavet om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 om tat sat